All right, everybody, so we're back. Uh, we have done a great job with this little guy here. Go focus. Oh, it's focusing on the wrong spot, sorry. All right, so we did uh, pretty good work on that. That's a good preliminary effect on that. Looks pretty good. So not bad, we'll do one more round of that just to ensure that everything comes out nice and smooth. That was that was pretty good build up for part one. As you can see, there's a little bit more right there, a little bit of a gap. Sorry for the nail. But uh, yeah, so looks pretty good. <clears throat> so I'll try to be in control of this a little bit more. That way we can just kind of keep keep that in line. But uh, along with that, um, we do have some good news today, along with our other good news about that. <clears throat> so, give me one moment. We have another fabulous box from Shapeways. So, the Hobby Knife, the Exacto Blade, ever versatile in its uses. It could even be a letter opener <laughs> or a box cutter. <laughs> So what could possibly be in this box from Shapeways, I wonder? Well, we're going to find out right now. My goodness. What have we here? In case you're a dork or a doofus that doesn't know how to handle these parts, our lovely guy over at uh, Shapeways, our Spaceway Parts guy, he already knew that I would screw this up. So let's try not to screw the new one up. In fear that we might do that again. So Booyah. What is this? It is a beautiful, beautiful replacement part. For our ill-fated one. And then, in case we screw up again, we have a backup for the backup. There's the backup for the backup. Actually, these look better than the other ones, I think. These look much cleaner. I wonder why. So anyway, we're going to do a little test fitting here. We know it's not going to fit. No pressure whatsoever. No pressure. But look. Yeah, I think these look just a little cleaner. That's interesting. But, uh, yeah. So that that's our, our guy right there. And then, uh, so this, this is the original crystal. Or the, uh, um, I guess the diffused piece that goes in here. So we just, I don't know if I want to, yeah, that's fine. So that's what it, it looks like when it's all put together, which is great. It's like perfect. It fits that shape pretty, yeah, pretty accurately. It's no problem. And you just fit that in after you're done cut, uh, coloring everything. So that's great. That through without any incidents. I'm nervous now. So uh, what we'll end up doing is taking the edge down on this side here, because it is like it is a really tight fit, and uh, but it's not. It's actually a little oversized, and I'm not gonna open the hole up here any more than it is. But I am gonna shape down the sides a little. I don't like if you could see it little too big here a couple burrs here but, so once we get that all cleaned up yeah 
so then we already cleaned up the bottom side too so that it would lay flatter and have a good point to adhere to and then we'll light block the whole thing so our goals for today are to get this cleaned up again a little more uh, i'm gonna clean the window frames here a little bit for our uh, rec deck and then that one's pretty much ready to go all right so now what we want to do I know this is taking me a lot longer than all the other modelers out there. That's where we're going to stop that for now. And then we're going to do... This stuff is like sneaky because it sneaks up on where <laughs> you don't expect it to be. that part now next part is to not touch the putty where it is because that is not what we're here for so I'll just clean that up a little I think it's looking pretty good though as far as uh, if we can get in frame looking really good so a little bit of a sensor band detail. But our plan with the sensor bands is pretty much the same as what Truckworks plan is, which is to uh, do that high build primer to get back the trenches that are there. Like so we might end up sanding it smooth a little bit and then coming back and putting the tape down that he did and then like do the same thing because this is actually my my saucer isn't that bad for you know how old this thing is this thing is really old compared to like I mean, and not only that but it's been exposed to old too like it's been um exposed as in like um out and about and like worked on then put away worked on then put away continuously and, and worked on is a loose term I know this is actually the most progress I've made I feel like I haven't even done much really kind of stinks that I'm splitting time between two models but at the same time I'm happy to you know Oh my god, here's another Enterprise. It's crazy how fast it is. I mean, this one has the, the crystal that we're not going to talk about. It's weird. No, it's good. I'm glad the Enterprise A is going decently smooth. So, um. Alright, so now uh, that was 320. So now we're going to switch to uh, 600. And uh, this is just gonna, not doing much other than cleaning up some of this where we were scuffing and sanding. So that way, when the, the uh, primer goes on, it'll be nice and smooth. I'm actually, really happy with this. Okay, so that turned out great. Uh, there's just a couple touch ups I want to do right now. Another piece of tape. We have to pretty much do the same thing we just did with the other one. Except for this time, since we already we didn't actually put this in yet. Put this right over here. Right there. Burnish it over the edges. Because we don't want anything. So, get my pair graphics kit. So last time. Okay, so now we're looking for these guys again. And we will take our scissors. Hopefully. Okay, 
So we have our new number 11 exacto blade. Oh, sorry. Ah. A brand new one. Straight out of the box, number 11. Number 11. And let's see this guy. Okay, so we'll try and just, uh, here, we'll show you. I, I tried zooming in and it didn't work. <laughs> so, take the number 11 exacto blade. No problem. Okay. So now we're back to this whole weeble wobble mess here. Okay. So there you go. There's your two frames in there. Looking good. On this side. So there's that. Or insta set in this case. Okay, just a little spritz. Let it dry for a little bit. And then that part is pretty much done. So then that'll be our thing. And then we'll, uh, next up is our impulse crystal here. As you can see, set wonderfully, honestly. Did I say crystal? Impulse engines. Sorry, impulse engines. The only thing is the gap's a little bit bigger to mind, but it's okay. 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 So while we're waiting for that, dry. Let's get back to putting. Really pushing to try and get this. Good to go for our uh, uh, painting and priming. So, the sooner I get to that, the sooner I can see those awesome pearl or I'm sorry, iridescent colors. I'll be happy with that. My wife will be happy with that because I've been bragging about them for so long, like a few years now. But that one still looks good. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna finish this up real quick. We're gonna go do something real quick. build that up to get us the look that we're looking for so we know the disaster that happened with our um, original impulse crystal uh, for the USS Enterprise refit and then uh, so we go from uh, fiasco to fixed look at it look at it it's beautiful Beautiful. It's not actually uh, glued in or anything like that yet, uh, but we are about to do that. So I just wanted to show it off because it looks pretty, and I'm so ha happy. I'm so happy. Oh my god. Excuse me. No, no I'm just kidding. But it, it is really. It does make me feel a lot better. So now we can move on. Uh, so we're going to glue that in place. Uh, then our next step for tonight is going to be fixing the edge here. Uh, get this all finished. And ready because uh, really what we're trying to do is get this thing primed I know it's taking me forever I'm sorry um, I should get everything primed uh, we still have a little bit of the officers lounge windows to uh, I'm sorry uh, rec deck windows to fix uh, they actually the officers lounge windows look pretty good uh, we're gonna, once we spray paint everything with uh, our primer we'll see how it is we're not going to worry about it too much yet because uh, once the primer's on there, we'll be able to see small uh, defects and everything like that. Uh, see what lines we have to rescribe, like these again. Because uh, I filled this in, not liking the way that I originally scribed it. So we're just going to kind of see how that goes uh, once it's filled because I want to see how much the uh, filler primer does. And then uh, 
we will see. I'll give it a, some, one more go around with the steel wool because it's been so long. And, uh, or maybe 600 so we don't have to worry about it. But yeah, I have a feeling we'll have to sand. Just saw it. One of these edges was pretty prominent, I thought. Uh, maybe not. Maybe. Maybe I'm thinking the Emperor is a. But, um, sorry. Anyway. So, yeah, this doesn't look great, but. Sorry, it doesn't look great there. It doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look great. Yeah, obviously, there's like a little misalignment there. Anyway. There's a little bit of a step. Uh, so, we'll probably. Maybe sand that a little bit before. Like, I know it's hard to judge because we are gonna end up probably sanding the whole thing down anyway, and then like uh, redoing the the center bands, like a totally different way. The way that Trekworks does it with the the high build primer and everything. So, because we, I don't know, it seems like a lot of hassle to worry about it, you know. But at the same time, it's a, it's cool detail if you could keep it, but. Like everybody says, like if only they would retool the whole mold and like just do the whole thing over where the the rim is already on there and it's complete, and then you just have to attach the two halves together. That'd be way better, I think. Too. Like I'm not the only one that thinks that. And uh, obviously, I'm not the first either to think that. So, but yeah, she's she's beautiful. I, I feel bad that I destroy the original crystal um, but yeah here it is one last time before she's checked in the garbage or she might stick around just to be like a reminder like hey remember what you did all these parts you got to be very careful with but I'm glad the, the new one is looking good so it fits much nicer it's um, unlike the other one that I was the the one I was having issues with was like this corner right here. It was just too far down, and I actually did notice it. But at, at the time, I thought it was just like, oh no, it's it's just my eye, you know. I'm, I'm not, I'm seeing it wrong, you know. But it wasn't my eye, because once the Enterprise Ace uh, went on, and it was like, it looked like the way I wanted it to look, and I didn't realize that this one or the other one didn't look as good as I wanted it to. So then I had to take it out, but I thought I was going to save it, and it didn't work out. So just be careful. And uh, that's the that's the gist of that. I mean, you should always be careful with the model, but <laughs> assumed nothing. <laughs> Assume it can't tolerate like a pinprick. You know, it's going to fall apart. So treat it like a delicate flower. Treat it like a, the beautiful lady that she is. All right, everybody, we're back. Uh, so. Uh, what I've been working on is this little guy, the airlock hatch. Uh, so what we're trying to do is get this thing ready to lay flat inside the... Uh, oh, oh. Yeah, what we're trying to do is get it to lay flat uh, in its location, which is right here. Um, so uh, that way this thing's ready to go for painting. So we're not going to put the photo etch part that goes on here yet because there's going to be some sanding and everything um, just to get that edge to look really good before we start like real work so once like the blending and everything is done then we'll put the photo etch on top because um, like this will go on the first layer of primer will go on and then we'll see what it looks like and what work needs to be done to that edge so that way it can get nice and done and then we'll have it ready to go uh, but for now what we're doing is we thinned it out quite a bit actually really thin now because it needs to sit a little bit thinner than how it normally does so that when the photo edge part goes on it too will have a nice flush appearance on the edge here so it's not supposed to be like protruding as much which actually is supposed to Ooh, focus there okay so right now it's, it looks like it sits pretty flush, and it does pretty much, which is good and bad because we need, we actually need it to be 
in a little bit more, indented, you know. So, but when you push on it, it does sink further back, which is cool. It's hard to see on the video, but come on, focus, focus grip, yeah. Come on, no, why are you focusing there? But yeah. So there's that. Where now you can see on the bottom here, it's showing that it sinks in, which is exactly what we need. Because then when we take our photo edge part, which has been primed already, it doesn't need to be primed, but it was because of where it was. I just put all the photo edge prime uh, and primed all the photo edge. So yeah, there's basically how it's gonna look. But I'm gonna use this part while it's gluing to press in and make sure that the bottom part, so that I'm gonna press in on the photo edge part so that it lays flat against the edge. So while it's being glued and held in place, uh, so that way the pressure, and I, it'll make sure that the the part will lay, this part will lay flat when it's all done. It's, it's complicated, it's stupid. I'm not explaining it well, that's the problem. It's not that complicated, but. I know everybody would understand if I was explaining it correctly, <laughs> but I'm not. So then, there you go. But then, uh, once this is done uh, drying today, which it won't take long because regular model glue doesn't take that long to to actually set up, then we're gonna go ahead and prime it. We're gonna get the first layer of primer. Everything is done that needs to be done for now, and then the primer will tell us what needs to be corrected and then the next layer of primer will hopefully be the last layer before the well we're not going to do the real hull color until after we get every, all the electronics put in and then the real primer the outer layer will be done so that way we can start like the intricate painting and everything like the other colors and the color for the BC deck around here and the color right around here and then the little white insert things here so that but that won't be done until after we are uh, a little further along with the electronics because all the electronics will be in here and then uh, we'll seal everything up with the bottom hole which means we got to get the, the bottom of the saucer prepped and ready too but that won't take that long there's that as much prep work that needs to be done on there um, you know the same stuff needs to be done like the uh, taking care of the the uh, navigation lights and stuff like that like bringing them down just a little because like on the the mold you, you'll see or you already have seen but there's like the ring and then there's an upper ring and you just got to get rid of that upper ring basically so and then it just comes flush closer to the hull and then there's the impulse deck if you can see it i don't know if it's focusing because it's hard to see from my angle so we had it we had to try to make it smooth, but we'll see how, like I said, we'll see how it looks when when the actual primer's on, because it'll, it'll tell us what needs to really be done. It's hard to tell, because it's white on white and everything, but, but once the gray is on there, then we'll see, we'll see divots and, you know, whatever needs to be filled or sanded or both sanded and filled. So I'm really excited. Because uh, that means we're getting close to getting the Aztecs on, which is great. I still have Aztec masks ready to go for both the ships. So after we do this one, we'll work on the Enterprise A, get that one ready to go for the same exact thing. And then uh, we'll see. We'll see what we're doing. We're doing good, though, I think. All right, well, we have our model glue. I know we're, we look like we're like running out really bad, but I have a whole new container of all this. So we're going to put model glue because there's no... Um, it's not the photo edge part we're putting in. Okay, so then we take our model part. And we'll insert that down in there. Make sure it's going to sit nice. Kind of good right there. Yeah, that's really good. So, then, like I said before, with our... Oh yeah, that's really good photo etch piece it's gonna be like our pressure point you know 
So we'll use that. Use the, so our, our purpose for doing this is so that when the glue sets, we know that there's going to be enough room for this guy to go on top. And it's going to be flush with the hull. So we don't want it to be bulging out on there. So then when we come back and put this thing on for real, it'll be good to go. It's hard to get a camera angle and keep pressure on it. There we go. That is looking good. So. Look at that. Look at that. She's, now this part's not glued in or anything. So just be careful with that. But right now, it's looking really nice. Yeah, these sensor bands aren't like lining up correctly with each other. But when we get... Like we said, we're going to use the Trekworks technique. <clears throat> so we're going to use the Trekworks technique to fix that. <laughs> I'm sorry if he doesn't want it coined to his technique, but it is his idea. So there we go. That's how the original part looks. It actually doesn't look that bad by itself. Except for the fact that it's got sanding marks now on it. From being sanded pretty uh, robustly. <laughs> That's perfect. That's the way I want it right there. All right, good. So now we can prime because that is, but we'll let it finish setting. It takes, according to the glue, for maximum strength, that's two hours. So we do have a couple hours and a couple hours worth of work on the other enterprise. So just to give us one last scuff down. So now I have a lot of the lighting already like pre-wired and I'll show some of that coming up. Like I, I'll show, I think I got a couple more that I got to rewire, but, or wire. Careful around the crystal. There's our new crystal. Look at that baby shine. There's nothing in there, but yeah, look at her. Shine. But yeah, there's a uh, lens that comes with that, that we will put in right when we're about to close everything up and then we'll have to like at least once that's we're at that point then all they have to do is like mask it a little you know you know we'll just be able to like put the mask right on top of that instead of having to mask off the spokes because the spokes will be done before we seal everything up, that's one area that's going to be like pretty complete by the time we're done. You could go to like a thousand grit on this, but I don't want to. I'm going to use thousand for like when we're close to the end. <laughs> Oh yes, look at how pretty she is. All right, now let's move on to our next one while we're waiting for the Enterprise to dry. Oh my God, she's back already! Holy crap! But yeah, there's the uh, the Enterprise, and she's ready. She's getting close too. She just has. Um, we'll do that part. Well, I like that. I might do some preliminary uh, sanding, just like we just did there, and. Uh, Maybe we will do um, some of our, uh, I don't think I ever did the edges on this one. Alright, there she goes. That's part of it. All right, now, I'm going to try and get this corrected too. Yeah, see, this is, this is great because I was trying to... Uh, that in. Uh, I was trying to get 
this line to stay because like I said it goes up stops there and then continues until like this shape continues but they meet and then that's it that's where it stops it doesn't continue all the way across because but that's because the model parts there you know it's like so then our goal is to also make this shape like it's continuous one piece, continuous piece like the impulse deck doesn't look like it's uh, meeting the impulse engines it's like one big piece together not you know not separate from each other all right uh, so uh, we just did a lot of the work on the impulse engines here and uh, as you can see it's mostly pretty good uh, waiting for I uh, put a little bit more filler in I uh, run on low on power here so I don't know how much longer I've got on this but uh, so we put a little filler uh, back in places that we took too much out of which is fine because uh, we finally got most of it the way that I wanted it so it's looking good uh, so this one's almost ready we're gonna work on these uh, officers lounge windows I'm sorry the uh, rec deck windows here and I always get those flip-flopped. I know which exactly which one's which, but I flip-flop which ones I say is who. <laughs> so we're going to get that taken care of. Then she's ready for primer. Um, yep, that's pretty much it. Oh, except for we do have to fill in our little piece here for it. So it might work out better than the other one. We'll see. Hello, everybody. We're about to uh, get this painting underdone as far as the adhesion promoting goes and then right we're gonna move right on to uh, our uh, next thing which is gonna be priming which is great priming the primary hull it's gonna be awesome so all right first things first and the position a little bit there so then we're gonna go right back to the duplicator uh, plastic adhesion promoter. So, just like before, but there are other parts. In fact, I think, you know what, instead of using this board like I usually do, I'm actually just going to put it on the bin like down here. Because that way. Spin it a little or spin the thing a little? Okay. We'll do that. Okay, so now it looks like she's just floating there. It's kind of cool. Yes, my my setup is really just as basic as it gets, really. I mean, this is like the poorest of four man builds. That might be the poorest guy you watch on YouTube. <laughs> if you do watch. But that's okay. Somebody's got to be poor, right? Might as well be me. It doesn't bother me. I actually don't really like money all that much. So, one thing I wish is I had more money to do this stuff because it's fun. It's funny because I'm getting to the painting portion and now I'm starting to see like goopy stuff. So uh, what this is, is uh, some alcohol on a microfiber towel. Nothing or something. Okay. There we go. So she's ready. I know what you're saying. About damn time. That's what I'll say. So, this is an enclosed area. We're going to get some air movement going. But, you know, if it starts getting too heavy, we'll open the door. Should be okay, though. This is not a plug for right over here. I hope it's just out of the way. <laughs> Although I do like it. Even I say it. So, alright, here we go. Here's nothing. Adhesion promoter, baby. 
Uh, yeah, and when humidity is less than the hand, the humidity is low. Shake for 10 seconds after each use, each minute use. Parallel eight inches. Okay, so now that it's up in the air, this will, this will help that. Okay. So, what we're doing is what we normally do. It's nice. Lights. So we're going to do three of these, basically. Three coats. To ensure we have good adhesion. Sure we're getting the edges and we're moving her around. Because we are gonna be doing a lot of taping on this one. Especially the saucer section. Okay, so we got that prepped. Uh, that's our first coat, and then let's see it between. Let's see. So we're gonna do we're gonna do three coats for this one. Uh, so we just have to let it sit for three minutes, and then we will be uh, we'll do another set. So now while that's doing that, we still have the Enterprise A to finish up, and then she'll be ready to do the same thing. So it's after we do the first coat of primer, we will um, switch to doing this guy, the Enterprise A. All right, we're ready for coat number two. That should like give us a really good, solid paint connection with our primer. So um, this is great too because then in like three minutes we can just go right into priming. And then after that, while we're waiting for the primer to set, which I don't know how long that's going to take. A little longer than three minutes, though. I am doing that on the side, but I realize that it probably won't matter that much. Because on the sides, I might be sanding down a bunch. Anyway, that's... tripod's like right in the way but I'd rather film this and be a little uncomfortable not perfect so <laughs> okay so there is our adhesion promotion next up is a duplicate primer 
This will sell, uh, tell us how much of this will need, too. This will give us kind of an indication, because I think I'm going to need at least one or two more cans of this. Because I've obviously got a whole other model to do. It's not just one Enterprise, it's two, so... Great though. I'm so excited. And I won't sing the song because I'm not a singer. Keep that way from the microphone. So that is detail painting too. We also have to get the uh you know the all of our little detail rooms painted like our Officer's Lounge and the rec deck eventually when the rec deck gets here. Because I have two rec decks on commission, I guess. Getting built for me or printed for me. So, that'll be fun. So, this is uh, what I'm using right now. So, this is the automotive primer uh, filler. So, it's Duplicolor. Uh, so far, it's worked great. Uh, I haven't had any issues with it. Um, doesn't feel as well as I'd hoped, but it's not the filler problem. Um, so, but when we do the uh, sensor band detail, we're going to use the high build primer. That's like this, but it's a high build. So it's a little bit, it builds up faster, you know, it's thicker. But that's only good for that, I guess. Not so much like the main painting. It does look good though. So. Looks good. And then, uh, yeah, did I... I didn't show... Or did I show? I was going to show off my, my new acquisition. Maybe later today. I was going to try to get a lot of this done today. If we get enough to do another coat i probably will do at least two primer coats on this before we start doing fiddling and like fixing so that way it's nice and thick and uh you know of, of course i'll sand like do 320 sand and then 600 sand of the the first coat and then after that we'll do the the next coat and then sand that one down to, to looking good and then we'll start working on repairs and what is, needs to be done. So, yeah, we've got less than uh, 30 seconds left, so. At least as far as I can tell. <laughs> okay. Sure, that's all clear. Alright, everybody, here it comes. Are you ready to paint the Enterprise? I'm ready to paint the Enterprise. Just clearing off the nozzle a little bit here. So we can get a nice good stream, hopefully. So I'm gonna test it out over here first, if you can still see it. Okay. Okay. See him? All gummed up now, right now. Okay. Let's do it. Here we go. A light coat. We're not doing doing enough to get our base going. So I kind of, like I said, see where we're at.
So just so you know, um, the reason I keep hitting this thing is because I'm actually spraying through the the uh, legs of the of the tripod right now. Okay, so you see like a low spot right there. That's okay because we will fill that in. Make it a nice even spot. A couple low spots on the edge. Nothing we can't work with though. Not bad. Not bad. There's our first coat. So it look, looks really good. I'm really happy with that. Now there, right off the bat, you can see, I can see, there's like a divot here, a divot there, divot there, there, there some weird spots so what I'll do is I'll just fill it with some of the the uh, perfect plastic buddy just to kind of fill in the divot a little and then we'll, we'll smooth it out and then I got to smooth out these areas too uh, where the phaser banks were again so and what I'll do is I'll etch a nice strong line into there a little bit like right where it's gonna be that way when I go to do it it's already has a decent line in there so there you go. Enterprise is primed, baby. And the sensor or the crystal looks really cool. Even the officer's lounge looks really not that bad. Oh, that turned out better than I thought it was going to. Wow. Holy cow. That frame just like disappears now wow that is so cool i'm sorry i was sticking my head in there but that hit the framing it just looks you see it there's a little work that needs to be done on it but it it blends in really well so we'll see how this goes uh right now we're gonna go back to Working on the Enterprise A. Uh, I know I'm going to have to sand this area before I start coat number two. And then uh, maybe... I mean, otherwise, it's looking, looking pretty cool. So now here's our glorious Enterprise A. Or Enterprise. I'm sorry, not Enterprise A. She is mostly dry to the touch. And what we're going to do is... See, this spot was like pooling, so I took off... That, so we're just going to smooth that out. So it doesn't do too well right there either. Okay. Okay, so now looking at it though, Look at how good she turned out. I love that. The impulse crystal turned out really good. Looks 
600 and first starting out with 320 and then going to 600. So now we're going to do it again. Wipe it down with some alcohol. Just because I was handling the, the model so much, I just want to make sure that we get any fingerprints and everything off of it. Excess dust, debris. Excess paint for sure. remover okay. here we go again step two But I mean, overall, dude, the primer helps so much. I know that like everybody says that too, but I can't believe like how much I can see with it, you know. Man, before you could see stuff, but you don't know like how it's gonna turn out. Like I didn't know the officers' lounge windows were gonna look that good. Is it perfect? No, absolutely not. I mean, we need some more work, like even on the officer's lounge window. We'll need, we'll need a little bit of work, and she'll need to be smoothed out a little bit more. Like I said, some of the divots are not actually showing up anymore. Weird. So, yeah, it's looking good, man. <laughs> All right, I think I'm going to take a little break from the fumes here and uh, go ask my wife to come out and check it out. So, all right, we'll see you in a bit.